thought it was well past time to do an update on this 3D printed Enigma machine. This is my Polish Enigma double. Um, and I basically got to the point where I had wired up the rotors with the, the correct wiring and the little pogo pins on one side. Um, but unfortunately the machine doesn't work. So the problem, um, the keyboard works fine, the lamp board works fine, and the plug board works fine. The, the problem is this rotor stack and the way I am doing that. So in order to make the little springy pins, I've been using these little pogo pins. Um, these are used for testing printed circuit boards, basically. And these are relatively expensive. You need quite a lot of them and they're quite small. The other problem I have is that I think the spring force on them is far too high. So in order to compress all of those little pins on the springs, it takes a lot of force. So it's over 500 grams of force. Um, I tried measuring it and my little, my little scales would only go up to 500 and it went into overload. This is just the reflector. For the machine to work, you've got the reflector with 26 pins and then three rotors all with springy pins that need to be compressed down and just the amount of force it's taking to do that is too much for my mechanism. Um, so I either need much, much lighter touch pins um, or need to come up with a different way of doing it. So you can see there as well, uh, the pins are already getting stuck. They're starting to break. Um, there's just so much force on them. I think part of the problem is my contacts here aren't smooth enough. Um, what I would do to fix that is basically replace that with a printed circuit board. So then it'll be nice and flat and smooth. That would be easy enough. But I think the problem is still going to be the pins. There's just too much, too much friction in the mechanism. So I have had this, this machine working when I didn't have the pins in it. Uh, mechanically, it does work. So what I'm considering doing in order to actually get the machine up and running um, as a kind of temporary hybrid fix is I'm going to rebuild the rotors without the pins as I had them before because mechanically they do work. Uh, I will do similar thing to the entry wheel. It'll just be there to provide the, um, the clamping force you need on the rotors to hold them in the right position so that they'll rotate. And I'm going to modify the input disk here and basically I'm going to cheat. Um, I will take the inputs and outputs from here and I'm going to run them into a microcontroller. So I've made plenty of um, software based Enigma machines before. I've made one in a wristwatch, I've made one into a pocket watch. So you know it's like this big. I can make the mechanism incredibly small and I'm going to do that as a kind of hybrid solution. So the rotor stack will function. It'll rotate around. The, the, the rotors will move when they need to move. But the actual um, scrambling of the signal as it goes through the machine, I'm going to do in a microcontroller and feed it back out. And I think that'll be a good interim solution until I can come up with a better way of doing the rotors. So I'm hoping I can do that in such a way that it's all retrofitable. And I think I should be able to, um, mainly because even if this isn't fully working mechanically, it would be nice to get it complete, uh, get this wiring tidied up. For example, I need to do the cable lacing on that, which is when you, you make it all nice like this with string. Um, I want to get all of that complete. I want to build the timber box that it goes into, and I want to make it into a functioning machine, even if it's not fully electrically mechanically functioning. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do, which means I've had to pull up my CAD model of the machine. Um, it's been a long, long time since I looked at this. I don't think this tells me the last time I edited it, but oh yes it does. Uh, that doesn't seem right. 22? Possibly? Um, November 22? So it has been a while since I've worked on this. Now I've got 
Enigma parts everywhere. Um, I've got boxes of them. Here's some of the rotors. Um, I can I can rebuild the rotors with these without the pins in them. Uh, I've got all sorts of parts. I think I've got boxes and boxes full of 3D printed parts because it takes so much designing and printing and testing of the parts to see if they're correct. Uh, you know, something like this takes hours to print and then you find it's off by half a millimeter. You have to fix your model. You have to do it all over again. Printing the little pawls to try and get the right geometry on those. Just There are literally thousands of hours of work in this machine. So I'd like to get it so it looks like it's it's complete. I need to reprint some parts. I've noticed that these keycaps are actually cracking. Uh, you might better see. So I need to redesign and reprint all of those to make them a little bit stronger. Um, but I think that's what I'm going to do to uh, to try and get the machine up and running in some sort of state. Uh, like I say, I can do the electronics. Um, it's going to need a, a tiny little input keyboard. I can do that with three buttons. I've done that before. Uh, and that'll let you tell, tell the microcontroller what the configuration of the rotors are. And you'll just be able to um, set it up on the electronics and then work the machine as if the rotors were working and it'll give the correct output on the lamp board. Uh, that's what I'm hoping anyway. I do have all the, the plugs. Um, this is all working, this is all functioning and is wired up. It's just the rotor stack that is causing me problems. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to have a big clean up in here. This is my little lab. Uh, this is where I do my electronics and model making type stuff uh, separate to my shed out there, which is where I do the car building and the, the welding and the grinding and the aluminium work. So in here I've got my little laser cutter, I've got my 3D printer. Um, even that is pretty old now. This is the, the printer I made myself. Uh, I haven't even looked at 3D printing in quite a while to know what the latest advances are. If I could just buy a machine now, that'll do everything I want. But uh, I really need to sort out my, my piles and piles and piles of random things, uh, including some machines I built years ago. Uh, like this this plasma lamp is this is this is 35 odd years old now um using a black and white tv flyback transformer which try getting hold of one of those these days it's not easy so i think a good clean up a good reset i need to find all of my enigma parts i need to um remember how my model works and uh have a look at getting this to the state where mechanically it works again and then I can look at doing the the modification here and uh, I think what I'll be able to do is shorten this entry wheel put a circuit board here that'll pick up those contacts and have that hidden away somewhere so that it's not obvious that's what's happening um, I think that's my best bet to actually make progress with this machine now it's just it's just so tricky trying to get a mechanism like this to work um, when it's when it's so flexible because it's built of plastic so if you obviously if you try beefing up all of the components to make them he heavier or thicker then the machine doesn't look like the real machines so it's kind of a compromise um, but uh, yeah I think I think that's going to be the way forward It's uh, late in the evening now, and I've had a bit of a clean up, and I've sorted out all my Enigma bits and pieces. I still need to brush the dust off it. I have removed the um, the pins from the rotors, so I actually took out the entire mechanism. Not sure if we can see them, but sitting inside that box, uh, those are the, the sort of cores, I guess. Uh, which are the pins and the contacts. So I've rebuilt the rotors just without the pins, basically. And I had all the parts to do that. So 
these are back in the machine and mechanically it works beautifully again. Um, so without all those pins causing friction on the mechanism it works much better. And I'm just reprinting part of the reflector. Um, that'll be this, which needs to go back in the machine there. I'm just reprinting it to make it move a little bit further across to put a little bit more pressure on these rotors, which I think will help. So mechanically the machine is working again. I need to now start looking at how I'm going to adapt this to take the contacts off and um, use them inside a microcontroller basically. So again this this all takes ages. Uh, so this part, you know, it takes a couple of hours to print and that's just one small part. So many, many thousands of hours into this thing. Uh, not just printing time, hundreds of hours of printing time, but all the design time and the time to take to test things out, redesign them, reprint them, try them out again. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a big project. and. This is why, you know, if you ask for me to send you the files, I will not send them. Um, one, they're not finished, and two, it, it, I think people just underestimate how big a project this is, and how much work there is in it, and how complicated it is. Even if I sent you the files, you probably could not build this machine. Um, you know, I've tried to help people in the past, and they'll say, just send me the files, I won't bug you, I won't ask you questions. And then they'll come back with uh, what sort of printer did you use and what sort of filament do you use. If you need to ask questions like that, this is probably too complicated a project for you. So for now, I just keep everything to myself. Maybe one day I will release them once I actually get to a point where I'm happy with it. But until then, please don't ask. <laughs>